Hi everybody, this is John Andrews, Social and Digital Media Manager for Redport Information Assurance. In my previous video, Introduction to Cryptography, I mentioned that I would cover two different encryption and decryption methods that are used today to secure information passed back and forth amongst users. Well, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you one method called symmetric key encryption, which is the most fundamental of the two techniques used. A little bit of what I'm going to present are the steps used in actually creating a shared key used between two or more users to access the content within a specific message. And that includes determining one or more keys known as cipher keys to create what are called cipher blocks, which lets you choose which letter or number will match up with the corresponding letter or number in your, in your message. After you choose these keys, you're then going to decide on a pattern in which these messages are going to follow. I'll explain in detail each step required to develop an encryption. So first, with deciding the cipher keys, what I'm going to do is create two cipher blocks I can use to match up our plain text, which is the first line. My two cipher keys are simply numbers, and in this case, I'll choose the number 5 and the number 18. Now you're going to use these numbers to count from the starting letter, which is a, which is A, five spots to the right. Five spots to the right, you come to the letter F. What you do is take everything from the letter F and shift it to where it's directly under the plain text. So F is under A, and then all of the other letters and numbers follow, where then the letter A concatenates at the end. That'll be your first cipher block. The second cipher block is created by taking the number 18 and counting from the original plain text, which is the letter S, and doing the same thing. If you decide to use more cipher blocks, which do increase the security of your message and hence make it harder to crack, that's up to you. I'm just showing you two different cipher blocks, which is ideal in this situation. Now on to choosing your pattern. The pattern is easy to determine. Since we have two cipher blocks, we are going to use the numbers 1, which is the first block, and the number 2, which is the second, to label our pattern. In this case, I'll choose a random pattern of 21221. It could easy, easily be 12112122211. It could be as long or short, short as you want. Now, what you do with this pattern is simple. You take your message, and with the first letter according to your pattern, you use the second block first. You see at the letter E in your plain text, since that's the first letter in your message, and look for the corresponding letter in the second cipher block, which is the letter W. Then you do the next letter, which is N. You look for the letter N in the plain text, and since the next number is in pattern 1, you take the corresponding letter to the first cipher block, which is S. You follow this pattern, however, and once you reach the end of your pattern, you start over. The length of the pattern increases security, so like I said, the longer the better. You repeat this until you complete the encrypted message. Now you are able to incorporate numbers and symbols in your plain text to also mix into your cipher blocks if you have numbers or symbols in your message, but in this presentation I'm just showing you the basics of how to create one. Now you're probably wondering, well what happens if my message is really long, like an email for instance, or some sort of long sentence that may take a while to encrypt them manually? Well, nowadays they have programmers out there who create programs in which you can simply enter in any type of message and it will use its own cipher keys and patterns to encrypt the message for you to send. But the problem with this is how is the sender going to decrypt the message to read it without that program? Right now off the top of my head I don't know how that's possible but like I said there are programs out there where you are able to do that. But for now, the easiest thing to do is send the receiver the ciphers in which you can decrypt it, and that's where the security level comes in. The disadvantages to any type of encrypted message being sent is how to transport the cipher keys without those being intercepted by third-party hackers. Two of the most known ways of doing this somewhat successfully is calling the receiver by phone and letting them know that you'll send it to them in a password-protected document, for instance, or snail mail it to them through the postal service to where they actually receive it physically. But like I said, this is the most fundamental way of encrypting a message and it is by far more secure than any other dummy down encryption method because of its convenience and speed of decryption once you receive it. But I hope you enjoy this presentation and someday learn to create your own symmetric key encryption to send a message that maybe you don't want others knowing other than the receiver. 
But that is all on our screencast, so please be sure to check out our website at www.redport-ia.com where we offer quality information, assurance, and computer security. And also check out our Facebook page at www.facebook.com slash redport and follow us on Twitter at redport underscore IA. Thank you, and I hope everyone has a rest good rest of the day. Thanks.